In the 1940s in New York City, a modernist movement was born that combined lessons learned from Matisse, Picasso, Surrealism, Miro, Cubism, and Fauvism, creating a new artistic language. At that time, New York heralded the triumph of American abstract expressionism. Two artists stood out, Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko, creating two different forms of abstract expressionism. Many may think that their works are too abstract, far from the representation of old masters, and that any person could reproduce them. But this artistic movement hides a significant contribution to modern art, and a very deep meaning. So much so that the CIA also paid attention, using art for a political battle considered important at the time. Today, we will discover the origins and history of abstract expressionism. During the period leading up to and during World War II, modernist artists, writers, and poets, as well as important collectors and dealers, fled Europe and the onslaught of the Nazis for haven in the United States. The post-war period left the capitals of Europe in upheaval, with an urgency to economically and physically rebuild and to politically regroup. In Paris, formerly the center of European culture and capital of the art world, the climate for art was a disaster. And New York replaced Paris as the new center of the art world. The impact the war had on the American psyche was apparent in soldiers coming home with severe PTSD. Families struggled to adjust from wartime independence to regressive domesticity and youths sought an expressive outlet under the watchful eye of an increasingly paranoid American government. Communist infiltration was an increasing fear among American politicians, especially Senator Joseph McCarthy. In that paranoia, McCarthy led a charge of witch hunts against potential supporters of the Communist Party. Many American artists had a desire to freely express the emotions and attitudes that the public was feeling. However, they simultaneously feared the consequences that might come from any interpretation of their work that might deem them a communist sympathizer. Abstract expressionism art began to emerge as a vehicle that would allow the artists to pursue these desires. It simultaneously protected them from any definitive and incriminating interpretation of their work. While the abstract expressionism movement itself emerged at this time, the origins of the style can be traced back further. One of the more influential art movements on abstract expressionism was in fact surrealism. Abstract expressionists pulled from the surrealists the idea that art is born out of the subconscious mind spontaneously. The early abstract expressionists had two notable forerunners, Arshile Gorky, who painted suggestive biomorphic shapes using a free, delicately linear, and liquid paint application. The painterly spontaneity of mature works, such as The Liver is the Coxcomb, The Betrothal II, and one year the milkweed immediately prefigured abstract expressionism, and leaders in the New York school have acknowledged Gorky's considerable influence. On the other hand, Hans Hoffmann used dynamic and strongly textured brushwork in abstract but conventionally composed works. Another important influence on nascent abstract expressionism was the arrival on American shores of a host of surrealists and other important European avant-garde artists who were fleeing Nazi-dominated Europe. Such artists greatly stimulated the native New York City painters and gave them a more intimate view of the vanguard of European painting. As we said previously, abstract expressionism had two distinct currents. The first was defined as action painting, and the greatest exponent was Jackson Pollock. During the late 1940s, Jackson Pollock's radical approach to painting revolutionized the potential for all contemporary art that followed him. To some extent, Pollock realized that the journey toward making a work of art was as important as the work of art itself. Pollock redefined what it was to produce art. His move away from easel painting and conventionality was a liberating signal to the artists of his era and to all that came after. Artists realized that Jackson Pollock's process essentially took art making beyond any prior boundary. The term action painting was coined by the American critic Harold Rosenberg in 1952 and signaled a major shift in the aesthetic perspective of New York school painters and critics. According to Rosenberg, the canvas was an arena in which to act. It was the physicality of the painting's clotted and oil-caked surfaces that was the key to understanding them as documents of the artist's existential struggle. Rosenberg's critique shifted the emphasis from the object to the struggle itself, with the finished painting being only the physical manifestation, a kind of residue of the actual work of art, which was in the act or process of the painting's creation. This spontaneous activity was the action of the painter, through arm and wrist movement, painterly gestures, brushstrokes, thrown paint, splashed, stained, scumbled, and dripped. 
the painter would sometimes let the paint drip onto the canvas, while rhythmically dancing, or even standing on the canvas, sometimes letting the paint fall according to the subconscious mind, thus letting the unconscious part of the psyche assert and express itself. All this, however, is difficult to explain or interpret because it is a supposed unconscious manifestation of the act of pure creation. The second current of abstract expressionism was the color field, which saw the works of Mark Rothko as its maximum expression. Greenberg perceived color field painting as related to but different from action painting. The color field painters sought to rid their art of superfluous rhetoric. Artists like Motherwell, Still, Gottlieb, and especially Ad Reinhardt and Barnett Newman, whose masterpiece Vir Herocus Sublimis is in the collection of MoMA, used greatly reduced references to nature, and they painted with a highly articulated and psychological use of color. In general, these artists eliminated recognizable imagery, in the case of Rothko and Gottlieb, sometimes using symbols and signs as a replacement of imagery. Certain artists quoted references to past or present art, but in general color field painting presents abstraction as an end in itself. Artists wanted to present each painting as one unified, cohesive, monolithic image. In distinction to the emotional energy and gestural surface marks of abstract expressionists such as Pollock, the color field painters initially appeared to be cool and austere, effacing the individual mark in favor of large, flat areas of color, which these artists considered to be the essential nature of visual abstraction along with the actual shape of the canvas. However, color field painting has proven to be both sensual and deeply expressive, albeit in a different way from gestural abstract expressionism. Although these currents are different in representations, they share some characteristics, including the use of large canvases and an all-over approach in which the whole canvas is treated with equal importance, as opposed to the center being of more interest than the edges. It has been argued that the style attracted the attention in the early 1950s of the CIA, who saw it as representative of the US as a haven of free thought and free markets, as well as a challenge to both the socialist realist styles prevalent in communist nations and the dominance of the European art markets. The book by Francis Stoner Saunders details how the CIA financed and organized the promotion of American abstract expressionists as part of cultural imperialism via the Congress for Cultural Freedom from 1950 to 1967. Tom Braden, founding chief of the CIA's International Organizations Division and ex-executive secretary of the Museum of Modern Art, said in an interview, I think it was the most important division that the agency had and I think that it played an enormous role in the Cold War. Abstract Expressionism influenced other artistic movements. In this video, we discuss how the main artistic periods in history developed, 